The Garber Co-op salutes all of the coaches, athletes, and cheerleaders who make the commitment to make high school sports great. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Imagine a school with more than 26,000 enrollments per year, cultivating opportunities for students to develop new skills and gain industry-recognized certification. Now imagine a corporate training center that partners with more than 500 local businesses each year, providing a productive and prepared workforce for employers in Oklahoma through customized training. Now imagine a community resource who believes our business thrives when our community thrives. We aren't just the local Votech. We are Autry Technology Center. The Turquoise Boutique offers a wide variety of fashion, accessories, and gift items. We are located in downtown Enid at 101 North Grand Avenue. Check us out on Facebook, TTB VIP, for all of our newest arrivals. We love people, fashion, and the Wolverines. high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. Hager Brothers Trucking has served the Oklahoma Panhandle for 22 years. We are a family-owned trucking company that hauls grain, livestock, and over-the-road commodities. If you are looking for trucks to transport during harvest, please call our office at 580-349-2439 or visit our website at www.hagerbrotherstrucking.com. We also offer heavy-duty truck and trailer repair in Goodwell, Oklahoma. If you need your truck serviced, please give our shop a call. Class A CDL drivers and owner-operators are always wanted at Hager Brothers. Visit our website to apply. All right, welcome to Garber, Oklahoma. It is the 2023 Next Era Energy Resources Invitational Championship Saturday night for the girls here as the Cash and Wildcats taking on the Garber Wolverines. I'm Eben Abavi. Appreciate you guys joining us here on a Cash and Wildcats.tv takeover here in Garber. Uh, my man on the camera is my uh, is my good guy, my hero, my my confidant, Maddox Gibson. We'll have Chris Gibson, his daddy, coming up. He's hitting a Wolverines concession stand. Is it full of burgers and hot dogs and whatever? But uh, we appreciate you guys joining us here again live on Squirtle.tv, the next era energy resources. As again, we'll have the Wolverines taking on the Cash and Wildcats here. It's going to be a good one. Uh, the Wildcats winners uh, thus far in uh, day one versus Aileen Cleo. They were able to uh, take on that victory and uh, were able to take Hooker down to the wire, winning 39-33, to where they find themselves here in the championship game against Garber. The hometown Garber Wolverines winners on day one against the uh, against uh, Tonkawa. They go on to beat Perry 53-42, and, uh, and uh, they will be the uh, road team here. Welcome to the booth, Chris. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Great. I'm doing fantastic. You may have to mess with the audio a little bit, but a big shout-out to the uh, fine administration here at Garber. I had a chance to visit the hospitality room. Big shout-out to all those fantastic folks in there, and meatballs and pasta it was really good. And mm. uh, I, they, they, they were worried that, is it going to be all cash in? I said, no, I'll say nice things about Garber, <laughs> and that's definitely what we're going to do here as Adam has given us the reins here tonight. I mean, uh, Garber, man, they haven't, this is the first time I've been here to their gym, and I've seen it, you know, uh, on Squirtle uh, yep. the last few years that we've come up here to the uh, tournament, and um, it just seems like we'd always been playing football every time that uh, <laughs> I had a chance to come up here and never have made it. But I've watched it and seen the facilities. But walking in here, it's it's impressive and it's fun to come up here because Garber's had a lot of success in uh, basketball and football. And and it, you walk in here, it's like, man, this is kind of the same feel of, of cashing. You know, it's a lot of pride when you walk yeah. in here and uh, you see the banners. And it's, it's going to be a fun atmosphere tonight. Absolutely. It's going to be fantastic. And, and you're exactly right. I mean, they're, they're still building on. I mean, this is Garber's the quintessential example of bond, uh, bond money and, bond, and positive bond votes. 
They've got a uh, they've got another athletic indoor facility going in. They play eight man football, and they're going to have a. I mean, it's fantastic, and that stuff translates to victories. That yep. stuff translates into success. Uh, and, and on and off it, the court on and know? off the court that's exactly right so big shout out to the administration here in garber uh, fantastic jim and you're right uh you know wildcats have been pretty uh um, i guess fortunate to have long runs going to play in you know three state championship games and playoffs where you know it's been hit or miss for us here in this particular tournament but uh congrats, congrats to, to uh, fairview right. today right. for uh winning uh, back-to-back state championships and i know uh, adam and the scortal crew is uh, probably pretty happy with, uh, with that being from uh, Fairview guys and Coach Hardaway being a Fairview guy. So congrats to Fairview going back-to-back. -back. I think 30 straight wins in a row, is that's impressive. Very impressive. So uh, we've got the – what I love here, they play the state song, which I every you, no matter what school you're from, right, you know, whatever's happening, you got to get up and, and clap the state song. And uh, we'll have our national anthem here in about 20 seconds, starting lineups. But, again, appreciate you guys joining us here on the Next Era Energy. It's a Cash and Wildcat CWTV takeover. Uh, but we'll certainly have a good one here. And uh, for all the fine folks at home or watching from the Garber side, don't worry. We're going to give you all some props. It'll be a uh, – Adam Adam trusted us as he's parting uh, with the Fairview uh, cha State Championship in football. He's trusted us. We'll, uh, we'll take care of you. All right. All right, God bless America. Great rendition of the national anthem there by Garber Cheerleader. Big uh, shout out to her. That was fantastic. So lucky to be living here in this great state, in this great country, greatest country in the galaxy. And we've got starting lineups here for championship Saturday night. And we'll start off with our visiting Garber Wolverines. Oh, actually, we'll, we'll go with Cash. <laughs> So are we the are we the home team? We're the home team, but, okay. but we are the uh, visitors, I guess. And you know, you know, Garber folks going to sit on their side as well. So yep. the it packed house tonight. So starting lineups here for the Wildcats: senior guard number ten, Reese Williams; senior guard thirteen, Lauren Jenkins; toot toot, L Train; number fifteen, junior guard. Actually, we've got uh, yes, Abby Hopgood; number fourteen, junior guard, Madison Westerhoff, and. Junior post, number 23, Megan Schaefer, Wildcats, white tops, white bottoms, home team, new rules here. You got to make sure it's got to be home. You can't have any type of crazy uniforms anymore, which I like. Maroon uh, outline and numbers, and Wildcats looking sharp. And so for your so for your visiting Gar, I guess in essence, visiting Garber Wolverines, they got a little music going, Chris. I love a little entertainment. I like it. Fired up. All right, so sophomore guard, Mandy Bell. Starting number 23, post, Kaylin Bond. Number 11, junior point guard, Chloe Wilkerson. Senior post. 
Kaylee Island. And number 22, senior post, Lila Washington. That is your Garber Wolverines. Hometown visitors tonight. Wolverines are in maroon tops, maroon bottoms, a little gray and white trim, looking sharp. If you love maroon, this is the place to be. There's a lot of maroon. We had Perry <laughs> earlier. Right, we you had Ripley had earlier. To, we, we, <laughs> I mean, I was walking in. I was like, there is not another color team in here. There's a few orange hats. And it's Neiman and Bobby, Chris Gibson, bringing you a championship Saturday here live from Garber at the Garber Inventational, brought to you by Next Air Energy. Big shout out to our officials. I know I see one that worked that triple overtime game last night. I asked him if he uh, got some go-go uh, juice or a couple Red Bulls. He says, huh, he rolled his eyes at me. But what do we say about our officials, Chris? I love the officials. I uh, cannot have the game without them. Sure appreciate them uh, giving of their time and their effort to come out here and uh, – Administer the rules and, and keep the uh, game fair and um, and really give these kids an opportunity to get out and compete. At the tip, Megan Schaefer against Layla Washington. That one gets tipped out quickly. Wilkerson with the jumper from the angle off the hands. It looked like Abby Hobgood, and it will stay maroon ball. So we expect quite a bit of up and down here between both of these teams. Out of the bounds here, it'll be uh, on the baseline. Garber looking. So it'll drop right into uh, Layla Washington off the glass, no good. Schaefer in her face, rebound, offensive rebound, and putback is good by number 23, the freshman Kayla Bond. And the Garber Wolverines draw first blood. Quickly down, Jenkins right side, Wildcats facing a little bit of zone look here. Up top, Westerhoff, junior guard into Williams. Wildcats will reset, skip pass, dangerous, tipped off the hand, stolen by Washington, two on one. Wilkerson to the glass, left hand no good. Offensive rebound is another putback. This time it's Washington. So two offensive rebounds, two buckets for the uh, for the hometown Garber Wolverines. Yeah, and they, they kind of came out here quick, like you said, and that, that's kind of how they play. What I want to watch is Megan, you know, Schaefer, keep, keep under control, don't foul. You know, they're gonna go on runs, but make sure you get back in position to play good defense. Make sure you hustle down the court get down the court to play some offense. Wildcats with their first shot, just off their Jenkins left wing. Westerhoff hounding Wilkerson up top. Man defense here, we have a hook down low. That's kind of tough there as a little wrestling move on Warren Jenkins matching up with Kylie Kaylee Island. And I tell you what, Garber, they're gonna come after you. They got two solid, solid posts there. Yep. Uh, definitely, and, and, and it's not a situation where they're, they're anchored down. Both those, both those girls can move. Yeah, no doubt, both of them are uh, very, Tall, big, athletic girls that can, uh, both of them have, you've seen, fight for rebounds, go up strong, and uh, that's going to be something. I, I wonder if uh, Coach Andrew Taylor is going to have to adjust, maybe put some more size in there with Megan. Uh, you know, we've gotten away with only having Megan in, you know, or uh, Harp, you know, one of those two girls right. in there. But tonight, with the size that they have, do you think that, Andrea will have to, or Coach Taylor will have to adjust and have some two bigs at the same time. She might have to. Wildcats, that's part of their value and part of their strength is running up and down. Inside entry pass off the hands of number 15, Kaylee Island. Good. I love seeing Lauren down there just battling <laughs> uh, on the post, you know, where she's usually out there guarding a smaller player, a quicker player, and she is not a afraid to get down there and mix it up down low. And uh, that time, she played great defense, was able to get the turnover. She did, Navia Fincher, the sophomore, checking in for number 23, Kaylin Bond. Wildcats off the turnover, skip pass, dangerous, can't do that. Quickly down, that second steal there by Washington, right hand off the glass, it's good. She's got four. Wildcats turnovers leading and offensive rebounds leading to uh, buckets. Uh, for the Garber Wolverines. That's the second skip pass that's been stolen. Hopefully the Wildcats will kind of learn from that here in a second. Wildcats again extended 2-3 here for the Wolverines working to find that high post. Drop down, Megan Schaefer has been kind of swarmed quite a bit. Abby Hobgood with the drive. Wildcats will reset. Ball fake. Williams with the cut to the drive to the cup. Right hander's no good. That's quickly uh, wrapped up there by Mandy Bell, the sophomore into Wilkerson. That's Westerhoff. Hounding her across the timeline. Abby Hobgood gets the matchup against Layla Washington up top. Great crowd out here tonight, championship. It's gonna be a, a, a double game, Garber Cash and Championship, boys and girls. Great job by Westerhoff on the D. 
Williams with the theft, right side, two on Let's one. She's gonna go up, Euro off the glass, it's good, delicious. Reese Williams, one man wrecking crew, the Wildcats get their first score. Yeah, she, she's the one that threw the skip pass, got intercepted a while ago, she kind of took a, a play right out of their playbook there. Uh, with her athleticism and quickness, and she was able to really jump in front of that pass and just, I love how she just took it to them, took it to the rack, got fouled and was able to finish. I think I kind of jumped in on your call there nope. and said, take it, you know, just take <laughs> it to the rim, take it to them. And she did that and was able to get it in there for the, for the three-point play. So three points, uh, traditional play that is converted there by Reese Williams. Foul was on number 20 in the Vea Fincher. First foul against the Garber Wolverines. If you're new to high school basketball this year and there's no seven foul bonus, single bonus, uh, Westerhoff hounding. Stolen, it's like she's out of bounds. Great defense by the Wildcats. Westerhoff and Lauren Jenkins hounding Chloe Wilkerson. And we've talked about it, uh, you know, in terms of what you can always depend on Madison Westerhoff is, is fantastic defense. Well, somebody said the other day, man, she's such a good shooter. I was like, yeah, she, she shot six threes the other day in that one game. But her biggest asset, I think, is her defense. Man, she when she gets out there, she can move and really get in front of those players. And she stays in great position all the time and just hounds people until they turn it over. I love her tenacity on defense. Well, you, right there, Axe textbook uh, short corner offense. There's uh, Schaefer drops down to Reese Williams. Credit to the assist to the junior post. Reese Williams has five points, all five for the Wildcats. Off the glass, loose, under, under the basket, another offensive rebound. And what can you say about Layla Washington? Six points off two offensive rebounds. She's a menace down there in the lane. Yeah, and that time it's almost like she threw it up off the backboard to herself and uh, <laughs> was able to come down with it and put it back up strong. Wildcats will have to respond down 8-5 here. 346, we won't have a clock working for you. I can't do everything. We just can't do it. We need a producer up here. Deep three, McCracken just a little long. She's fantastic. She was she had two huge critical threes in the fourth quarter in that win against Hooker. It's so nice seeing her. Westerhoff hounding Chloe Wilkerson. She's going to get the foul. That's unfortunate. Uh, you know, in those situations, you want to reward reward that player, but uh, give credit to Wilkerson keeping a little bit of composure there. Westerhoff will pick up her first foul, second there for the Wildcats. So we'll have a must a mass substitution as uh, Westerhoff will have a seat coming in will be it looks like uh, Jaylee Hart number 20 Chris mentioned her earlier so we're going to have two posts in there for the Wildcats at the sophomore forward will come down she's going to stay it looks like a little matchup zone uh, well actually they're going to stay in man so it's like Jenkins is going to stay up top on on Washington and she dives through the middle a lot of contact by both girls loose ball Jaylee Harp Jenkins coming in, looks like we'll have a jump ball. That all started there by the sophomore, Jaylee Harp. If you ever talk about active hands, that's what that looks like. Yeah, that time she just got out there, kept those hands out and, and in those passing lanes. If you can do that as, that as much as they move around and as quick as they move that ball around, just get one finger on the ball and kind of throw them off. You get a chance to jump on the floor like there, right there with uh, Lauren, get able to go in and get the ball. All right, so entry pass, and that's what you got to do. Even with the two posts that they have that are talented, Wildcats have still got to look. Great job by Megan Schaefer getting deep in the block. She draws the foul. That one's going to go against number 14 for Garber. Uh, no, I apologize, number 15, Kaylee Island. That's her first. Shot's no good. Rebound into Island. Oh, that's, that's a... That's an off ball, and there's some frustration. I'm, I didn't see this uh, with Island and Washington earlier. Maybe Cash and Wildcats are getting a little under their skin. Well, because they're, they're just, uh, I mean, they're sticking to them. I mean, they're being physical. There was, a, you know, that whenever uh, she went through the lane down here a while ago and uh, Lauren Jenkins was all over, you know, I think she was wanting a foul or wanting a call or something there, and they're letting her really play, letting them stick to them. And uh, it is, I think, kind of throwing them off their game a little bit. All right, turnover off of the uh, foul there against Island. That's her second. Chloe Wilkerson now with Reese Williams matched up, knocked out of bounds. Looks like Madison Westerhoff will check back in as Island has his seat. Looks like Coach Taylor is going to make some adjustments or uh, give some uh, a break there to Reese Williams for the Wildcats, who has all five points. Uh, Addison McCracken will have a seat. So coming back will be Hopgood and Westerhoff uh, to join Harp, Schaefer, and Jenkins up top. Garber with the ball. Loose. Def a dangerous pass into Wilkerson from number 20. That was fingers. Pass inside to Layla Washington. Almost got the walk. 
Looks like it'll be a jump ball. So the possession error in favor of the Garber Wolverines. Checking back in will be Island. And looks like uh, number 20, Nevea Fincher, the sophomore, will have a seat. It was kind of a tough pass. Most likely, Coach uh, Jamie Davis will have a chance to have a conversation. Inbounds to Garber on the baseline. Skip pass baseline. Uh, Hobgood up top on Island. Or actually, I apologize on Washington. Wilkerson drops it in. Harp just a little bit late off the glass is good. Right-hander is good by Kay Kaylee Island, her first bucket, 10-5, doubled up. And we'll have a foul as Wilkerson comes up top. And it's, <laughs> we may not have enough girls to finish this game. As <laughs> that is the fourth foul on the Garber. Okay, we'll reset here. So on the, actually in the, on the scoreboard, Gar, uh, Garber is listed as the home team. So uh, we'll go ahead and get you. I don't know who's running the scoreboard. We don't have a clock. Sorry, Keith, I apologize. <laughs> I, I was trying to call uh, my man Chris to bring me another camera. I can hook it up to the, to the to scoreboard here. 149 on the clock, first quarter action. Appreciate you guys joining us here from the Next Era Energy Garber Invitational. Entry pass uh, in, and so... Uh, Using any part of the leg there, lower leg, to uh, stop that will be called, considered a kick ball. So that one will go against uh, Layla Washington, and that will go down on the baseline. Chris, what do you see here, Wildcats, uh, from a standpoint uh, from their offensive sets here? Offensive, they're just making sure Megan Schaefer's not going to beat them. And, you know, like you said a while ago, you got to get the ball to her. She's your best player. And uh, if you can continue getting that to her, she's going to figure out a way to get to the rim. And then – them collapsing on her is going to open up things for everybody else, and that's why you see Reese with already with five points. All right, so another block, and that's five fouls. So if you're, again, as we were trying to offer up earlier, no seven foul single bonus in high school basketball. The Federation has voted while our Oklahoma has taken that to, into consideration and has put it in application. So every quarter, five fouls will be automatic double bonus. I love the call. I love the new ch rule change uh, from a standpoint of just timing and gamesmanship and everything. Well, you, um, you know, I, I asked, uh, I think I asked your wife one of the very first games, I said, is it going to make it more, more free throws, less free throws? And she was like, honestly, in the scrimmages, it was less, you know, and it was more game flow and everything yeah. else there. Um, and I, I do like how it resets. For the second half, for the second quarter, you know the third going into the fourth quarter, and really gives an opportunity for a team to still be uh, aggressive, right? Because it resets things, yep. and it doesn't, uh, you know, you just not, you aren't really uh, handcuffed to what you done, did in the previous quarter. Amen. As an official, as a former official, and currently certified official, I love it. I think it's great, and I think it helps out the officials quite a bit as well. It's a total win-win. So we'll have a three-second in the lane violation. Actually, it was two Garber Wolverines in the lane, so Wildcats get another turnover. And so with 1.13 on the clock here first quarter, it'll be Wildcats down 3 10 7 As Lauren Jenkins, the senior, L-Train, toot toot, gets it across uh, the logo here. Wildcats will set with two low here. Back to Jenkins. It's, a, again, that 2-3 look here, a little zone look for, for Coach Davis and the squad from Garber. High post catch around the horn. Westerhoff, deep three, it's up. Bang! Westerhoff on court. She gets her first three, her first points, and we've got a tie ball game as the Cash and Wildcats with that triple from junior Madison Westerhoff get it tied at 10. Under a minute, 44 seconds. Garber with the ball, most likely last possession here is number 22, Lalela Washington up top. Jenkins on her. She'll go left-hand drive, and we're going to get a reach call. That's a tough call. Reese Williams there. I like it, making it hard. Looks like she got a bit of the hand there as uh, Layla Washington was driving left side. So with that, it looks like uh, Lauren Jenkins will have a seat. Addison McCracken will check in with 33 seconds. Third foul on the Wildcats, just the first on Reese. Out of bounds baseline into Wilkerson. Three balls up. That's off the back iron. Rebound, another offensive rebound for Garber. They've been fantastic using that length and size. So with 23 seconds, around the horn it goes. Wildcats staying in that man, dop down into Island across to Washington. 14 seconds on the clock, McCracken on her. She'll go back left hand. Westerhoff almost gets the uh, walk. Air ball, Schaefer with the rebound, four seconds. Quickly down to Westerhoff from West, and it's good. Touchdown, <laughs> Cash and Wildcats as Abby Hobgood channels her inner Matt Harmon. Goes deep to the streaking Westerhoff and the Wildcats 
with the bucket take the lead at the end of one. Happy to have that uh, wherewithal to know, hey, there's four seconds left. Let's look down here and see what's, what's open. And to rope it to Westerhoff in stride. Westerhoff, two steps off the backboard, lays it in as the time runs out. Great play right there. And it all starts with Megan Schaefer down yep. here blocking out yep. and getting a big rebound there right before the end of that quarter to take the lead. All right. Love it. So with that, uh, we've got about 33 seconds. We'll leave it here. Uh, we love our sponsors. Again, uh, check them out in the right-hand corner of the screen. Deese, Dr. Deese and Diesel Horse Sports and Orthopedic, one of the uh, foundational uh, core advertisers and sponsors here of Scordle.tv. Keeping it free. Big shout-out to Adam Diesel Horse and Scordle. Uh, an absolutely uh, fantastic uh, option and scenario here for a lot of schools from 6A all the way down to B or C. We've got a good one here. It's Championship Saturday. I'm Neiman Abavi. Chris Gibson and I bringing you tonight's action. We've got a doubleheader as the Wildcats uh, Wolverines will also have a boys championship here right after this. Wildcats here up 12 to 10. Uh, it looks like leading scores for the Garber Wolverines. Number 22, Layla Washington with six. Uh, two from number 15, Kylie Island, as well as freshman Kayla Bond. For the Wildcats, it's five and five. We've got five from number 14, Madison Westerhoff, five from Reese Williams, and two from Lauren Jenkins. Cash in basketball. Fresh eight on the clock. Looks like we're going to say in that 2-3 is McCracken, Jenkins, Williams, Schaefer, and Westerhoff on the court for the Wildcats. For Garber, we're going to have that stain. Maddie Bell, Wilkerson, Island, Washington, and Bond. Turnover. It'll be Bond kicking it back out to Wilkerson for the Garber Wolverines, a junior point guard. She's got Reese Williams on her right now. Wildcats staying in that man D, trying to free up. Double screen up top, little picket fence. Good work there by Schaefer on the closeout, helping the helper. Right-hand drive, and it's good, and we'll go, have a charge. charge. Wow. And that they saw it coming. I mean, she would come around that corner. Uh, Jenkins got in a perfect position there to uh, – and had it set before she left the ground. So as, as she comes down and takes that defender on that's already in position, that is a charge. Even though she made the basket, it uh, comes off the board. Layla Washington picks up just her first, take two points off the board from her. Deep three, Westerhoff, that's short, fighting for the rebound off the hands of Schaefer into Chloe Wilkerson, active point guard, absolutely love her. She's getting hounded by Westerhoff off top, and we're gonna have a reach. That's all right, Westerhoff, you know, from that situation, she's asking for the push off, but you know, she initiated the contact there, so, you know, I think she's done work just moving her feet. That's gonna be her second as Abby Hobgood checks in. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. You know, she does a good job of just staying in front and staying in position. The girl was taking it to her, kind of put the elbow up, but she's the one, I think, that initiated the contact, and that's why they called it on Westerhoff. Right-hand scoop shot, no good. Addison McCracken with the defensive rebound. She's going to get fouled. That one's going to go against number 23. That's Kaylin Bond, the freshman post. That's going to be the second team foul here in the second quarter. Again, they reset, so two for Garber, one for Cashin. Now the bounds will be Lauren Jenkins. I think Cashin's given up a few inches at about every <laughs> position, but they've done a good job of staying in position, uh, staying in, uh, in a position on the defensive side of the ball to get in in uh, area to rebound the ball and get in a good uh, spot to uh, block out. Yeah. The Garber girls, man, they're tough. They've got a lot of energy, a lot of size, and uh, they're not afraid to uh, take it to you there. And uh, But on the offensive side of the ball, they haven't had as much luck because the Cashin Wildcats have had really – Quick hands yep. and uh, been in those passing lanes and haven't had a, you haven't really given them anything wide open. They, they, they snuck somebody down on the back side block one time. Yep. Other than that, uh, they haven't really had much luck, you know, with any wide open shots. Good possession here for the Wildcats, working around, being patient. Drop down to Schaefer from the short corner, does not drop. Great pass from Reese Williams. That's unfortunate. And you talk about size of Garber. I think they're bigger than our boys team. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so they, they definitely have got some great length, a lot of just great parts here, athleticism, size, length, everything. Chloe Wilkerson working on Reese Williams, works free with the left hand, jumper is good. So Chloe Wilkerson with her first basket. Nice job, and if, she's, if she breaks free from Reese Williams, she's earned it. Quickly down to the Wildcats, Reese Williams right hand, she'll drop down to Schaefer high post. Wildcats with a deep three, it's Jenkins, it's short, rebound into Island or Washington, and we'll have a reach from Williams, and that's just a bad foul. Yeah, right there, you know, the other team gets in position, gets the rebound, 
don't swap. And she's saying, I didn't touch her. You <laughs> swap at somebody like that and get close. A yep. lot of times they're going to call the foul, and that was more out of frustration than anything. Yep. And uh, Reese, she knows it. She's, she said it like I should not have done that. She's going to have to come out right here. Uh, Westerhoff and Reese on the bench right now. They're two of our best perimeter defensive players. Let's see what the Cash and Wildcats can do and keep to, still still keep Garber at bay. So checking in will be freshman Brooke Schaefer. So we got the Schaefer sisters out there. Left hand drive off the glass, no good. Fighting for the rebound. It looks like it'll fall in the hands of Island or uh, uh, yes Island up top. Wilkerson will close off left hand. She'll reset Wildcats again working. In that man defense, left-hand jumper is good. And Washington's just fantastic around the basket. Yeah, no doubt. And she was working that whole time in that possession. You kind of watch her play. She She's the quarterback on that, on that offensive side of the ball. Uh, when they're down there, she's pointing pe people to where to go, and she gets in great position. Uh, in that time, she got in great position right under the basket, made a good move, went up strong. Steal and a miss. Down is uh, no call as Abby Hobgood goes to the basket. Uh, Good defense there by number 22, Layla Washington, the senior post straight up. So high-paced action here. Garber with the two-point lead, 425 on the clock. Apologize. We got no clock for you. We'll just have to remind you, just hang tight, maybe keep a mental note. Maybe start your own stop clock at home. <laughs> Fighting through. And it's there's a lot of trash in the middle of the lane there as Washington's trying to work. Stole by Hopgood, one-on-one. -on -one. Right hand off the glass. A little too hard there. Good job there by Kayla Island. Not forcing a foul, just kind of running down. So back and forth, Garber with the ball at the logo is Wilkerson. 3.58 on the clock, second quarter action. Championship Saturday, high screen and roll. Nothing there. Wildcats uh, will reset. They'll leave uh, Washington wide open and she'll make him pay. Yeah, and she can uh, catch and shoot. I mean, I was thinking, well, she's a big post player. She's going to live down there on the block. But that time she caught it and was able to pull the trigger quickly and was, uh, was able to drain that three to put the, the uh, Garber Wolverines up by five. 17-12, 3.30. Again, that's 11 points, uh, leading all scores here. High post uh, for Washington, high post catch by Schaefer. She'll go up, and uh, that one will roll around. Brooke Schaefer fighting with that with Washington. That will fall in the hands of Garber. So a couple of empty possessions here for the Wildcats. They got to hunker down on defense here and, and try to slow down the Layla Washington show. Drop down into number 10, Mandy Bell. She's been quiet today, and she'll have a carry just like that. So with that, Madison Westerhoff will check in. Looks like uh, Addison McCracken will have a seat. So we'll have to watch number 14, and we'll have a timeout. We'll take one ourselves here live from Garber, Oklahoma. Hang tight. We'll be right back right after this. For more than 100 years, Oklahoma Career Tech has been training skilled and dedicated individuals, giving clear career paths to over 90,000 graduates a year. These individuals are the heartbeat of the Oklahoma workforce, serving thousands of companies, fueling this state's economy. Oklahoma is powered by Career Tech. Welcome back to Garber, Oklahoma Championship Saturday. Wildcats versus the Wolverines here in game one of the championship. As it's uh, been Garber 17 to 12 here in the second quarter. Wildcats and the Wolverines back and forth affair. Westerhoff, Jenkins, Brooke Schaefer, Megan Schaefer, and Abby Hobgood in for the Wildcats. Loose ball, Schaefer off the glass. It's missed, Brooke Schaefer the freshman puts it back. So sister to sister there as Brooke Schaefer is able to put that one in off the offensive rebound, 17-14. Appreciate you guys joining us. Neiman and Bobby, Chris Gibson bringing the action. Loose ball, will be a turnover. Megan's been a little rushed today, haven't you noticed? Yeah, on the offensive yep. side of the ball. Yep. Yeah, I think, you know, she hasn't seen 
a lot of competition down there that's that that good. You know, Washington is a, is a step up from the competition I think she's seen, and I think uh, as she as the game goes on, I think she'll settle in. She'll start really working those moves that she can do so well. Yep. And uh, I mean, you see it uh, right there. Great pass, the sister, uh, and just almost finished with the foul. But that's the thing right there that's going to open up is you know they're king on Megan. Megan gets the ball. She can turn and find somebody open like that going to the basket. And when those those happen a few times, then that's where she's going to be able to open yep. up and do some moves and get there to the basket and yep. finish. Like you said, it's kind of a little bit rushed. It's been a little bit hard off the backboard and hasn't fallen for her yet. But as the game goes on and she settles in, I think that will start falling. Schaefer completes uh, one of two from the line. That's Brooke Schaefer. She's got three. 17-15, Wildcats uh, – Cut into that Garber lead, just down to two now. Wilkerson, fantastic point guard up top now. She's going to go right side with Westerhoff on her. Skip pass deep into Island. Right hand turnaround is good. Fantastic move for Island. She's got four. Nothing Brooke Schaefer can do outside of just trying to keep her out of the lane. 19-15, under two here, 145. Wildcats back on offense. Little two-girl game here. Jenkins, Westerhoff, three ball from Angle. That's a little long. Schaefer fighting for the offensive rebound. She gets it. No foul call down low. And that'll go in the hands of number 10, Mandy Bell. Quickly out to Washington. And uh, give credit to that 2-3 defense there by Jamie Davis. Coach Davis, she's, she, when she can stack in Washington and Island down low, uh, let your guards go to work on, on the defensive end around the arc. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice thing. Mandy Bell, right hand drive, cut. And that one will be on Abby Hopgood as uh, Schaefer comes in with the block. And that'll be a shooting foul here that will send Mandy Bell to the line. That'll be the second foul on the uh, junior guard, Abby Hopgood. Mandy Bell, sophomore herself, at the line. Makes the first one. Twenty fifteen. 1.13 on, on the clock here right before half. It's been a fast-paced game thus far. Checking in will be Madison Westerhoff and Addison McCracken for Brooke Schaefer and Abby Hopgood. Second one is up, and it's long. McCracken with the rebound. Caught in the corner there by Wilkerson. Jenkins will get it. She'll go left-hand, cross the timeline quickly. Three on two. Westerhoff, deep three, baseline. Bang! Westerhoff heating up. That's her second May three. She's got eight. Under a minute, Wildcats get a huge three there to cut it to two, 20 to 18. Wilkerson right side, hounded by Westerhoff. No push off call there as the, the two have been battling all night. Schaefer coming across. We've got carnage in the lane, but it'll be Garber basketball. And I'll tell you what, you better bring out your football pads because uh, it's been a battle down there in the block for both teams. Yeah, both teams are really getting after it, and the, and the officials are really letting them play, and I like that. I do too. I like that they're letting them, uh, they're not calling every little thing, but they're calling the, the ones that need to be called. Yep. And that's why I love uh, when a game can flow and really the girls can get down there and battle and, and use their athleticism in and not be afraid to. And uh, right here, that's what you're seeing. And both teams are, are, are really playing uh, hard and free and not having to worry about those fouls. Yeah, most likely p make, make note if you're waiting for the boys game, probably have the same situation. So, again, with that uh, possession over on the jump ball, it'll go back to Garber. Wilkerson up top now. McCracken's on her. Wildcats with 35 seconds on defense. Garber passes it up top, and we'll get a foul. We just talked about that a little bit of uh, yeah. con you know, allowing a little bit of contact. That one will uh, stay down low. That'll be the fourth team foul against Cash and Wildcats. First one against uh, that one went against Jaylee Harp, it looks like. So four fouls for uh, Cash and three for Garber. Loose ball. Jenkins almost gets that loose ball. Quickly down is Bond. She works it back out to Washington. She does. A little skip, jump, stop, almost walk. She's, uh, her athleticism kept her from walking, but forced a bad shot, and it'll be out of bounds to Cashin. Yeah, I didn't think there was any way that she was going to be able to get a shot up and not travel there, and she was able to get that <laughs> shot up, and I thought it was going to go in, just went right over the edge of the basket there, so good, uh, good on her. But as it came down, the uh, Garber Wolf Wolverine that was able to get the ball was on the baseline, and so it will be uh, – Cash and ball with a chance to tie it up here or take, they, the, they lead, take the lead uh, here at the end of the half. 15 seconds says uh, Lauren Jenkins gets it across. 12, 10, 8. Williams up top, 5 seconds. Westerhoff dumped down to Jenkins. 
to the cup. She's going to get fouled. And that could have been very close to intentional as that was a bear hug up top by number 20. <laughs> That's uh, Nevea Fincher, the sophomore. Good sportsmanship picks up uh, Jenkins, and she'll be yeah, well, rewarded. At first, with I thought she was kind of walking up, <laughs> like she was going to walk up to her, but uh, very good sportsmanship. She just reached down, grabbed her, and Lauren said thank you, and jumped up, and she's ready for the free throws. Uh, I love, it. I love that uh, yeah. the, the both sides are really being able to be aggressive uh, with the way they're playing, and it's been a fun game to watch so far. Jenkins gets the first one to roll in. Shooters roll there for Jenkins. And here, you know. No, no dumb foul right here yep. because what happens if it's a foul? They get to go down yep. here to be the fifth yep. foul that gets two free throws. Be smart after the rebound or after the made shot. It's exactly way. Four fouls for both. 1.6 on the clock. Jenkins with the second free throw. That one rolls in. With 1.6. And that'll be it. So uh, just like we started, that's where we end the first half. 20-20 20 to 20 tie ball game. And uh, you wanted a good one, you got it here as the Wolverines and the Wildcats going back and forth. We, uh, again, appreciate you guys joining us here at, uh, at, the, in, at the Garber Invitational, the next era energy Garber Invitational uh, championship Saturday night. Uh, we have a good one here tonight. We'll have another one following as the Wolverines and the Wildcats will tackle and battle it out on the boys' side. Chris, uh, before we send it to uh, timeout, uh, you know, from your perspective uh, regarding uh, just – you know what it's like to call games like this. I, I, I just want to tell you thank you for coming up and helping me out. It it took a pretzel with cheese to bribe you to get up here. I still have a <laughs> and gotten he it ate for it you. before I, I got did. here. I ate it. In fact, a big shout out to the uh, uh, to the uh, hospitality room as well. I, I was like, hmm, we got a tournament. We got a hospitality room. Went and grabbed a diet <laughs> coke and some meatballs. But Chris, you know what, what's it like? I mean, it, it, isn't this fun to highlight kids? Oh, I love it. I mean, and especially when it's a game like this, like we were talking about, where the officials are really letting them play and and. Uh, put their athleticism on display and I'm loving this so far you know Garber comes out strong right there at the very beginning of the game first quarter goes up five or six yep cash and wildcats were able to come battling back take the lead at the end of the uh, first quarter second quarter kind of mimic that first quarter where Garber took uh, took control put up some numbers got up by, by uh, got up by five again and then the cash and wildcats hit a big three hit, uh, you know, get fouled there at the end, hit a few free throws to tie the ball game back up. So just the back and forth and the runs that we've seen so far, yeah, this is, you can't ask for a better ball game. I love it. Uh, and, and I hope the people that are at home can feel the energy that's here in the, the, the stadium tonight. And uh, it's, it's a fun, fun atmosphere yep. to uh, walk into on a championship Saturday night at the Garber Tournament. All right, so with that, great, uh, well stated, Chris. So with that, uh, somebody's going to be leaving home with their fifth win. Someone's going to be leaving with their first loss here. Again, as the Cash and Wildcats 4-0, taking on the number 9 4-0 Garber Wolverines. It's tied up at half. We'll take you to a timeout. We'll be right back. Make sure you hang back as uh, we've got an exciting second half here in about six minutes. Garber Co-op, serving the communities of Garber, Fairmont, and Covington, knows how important high school sports is to the community and is excited to help sponsor this contest. The Garber Co-op can help you with all of your grain, fertilizer, custom fertilized spread, feed, fuel, and propane needs. Visit the Garber Co-op today or call us at 580-863-2292. The Garber Co-op salutes all of the coaches, athletes, and cheerleaders who make the commitment to make high school sports great. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Imagine a school with more than 26,000 enrollments per year, cultivating opportunities for students to develop new skills and gain industry-recognized certification. Now imagine a corporate training center that partners with more than 500 local businesses each year, providing a productive and prepared workforce for employers in Oklahoma through customized training. Now, imagine a community resource who believes our business thrives when our community thrives. We aren't just the local Votech, we are Autry Technology Center. The Turquoise Boutique offers a wide variety of fashion, accessories, and gift items. We are located in downtown Enid at 101 North Grand Avenue. 
Check us out on Facebook, TTB VIP, for all of our newest arrivals. We love people, fashion, and the Wolverines. high school streaming service scordle.tv find out more at scordle.com slash stream hager brothers trucking has served the oklahoma panhandle for 22 years we are a family-owned trucking company that hauls grain livestock and over-the-road commodities if you are looking for trucks to transport during harvest please call our office at 580-349-2439 or visit our website at www.hagerbrotherstrucking.com we also offer heavy-duty truck and trailer repair in Goodwell, Oklahoma. If you need your truck serviced, please give our shop a call. Class A CDL drivers and owner-operators are always wanted at Hager Brothers. Visit our website to apply. For more than 100 years, Oklahoma Career Tech has been training skilled and dedicated individuals, giving clear career paths to over 90,000 graduates a year. These individuals are the heartbeat of the Oklahoma workforce serving thousands of companies, fueling this state's economy. Oklahoma is powered by Career Tech. All right, welcome back. Championship Saturday night, second half action, live from Garber, Oklahoma. It is the Next Era Energy Resources Invitational. I'm Neiman Abadi, Chris Gibson, still working at the concession stand, but, uh, oh, there he is. Well, welcome back. Uh, an exciting first half as the Wildcats and the Wolverines knotted up at 20 all. And leading scorers here for the hometown number nine ranked Garber Wolverines led by Layla Washington, the senior post. She's been phenomenal inside and out. Defense, offense, she's got 11 points. Right behind her, Kaylee Island with four, Chloe Wilkerson with two, Kaylin Vaughn with two, Mandy Bell with one. Wildcats a little bit more spread out across four players. Eight from Madison Westerhoff on two make threes. Five points from Reese Williams. They're all at the beginning in the first quarter. Four from Lauren Jenkins, all from the line and three points from Brooke Schaefer. All right, so what are the uh, keys for the second half here for both teams? I think the keys are to really continue to work the ball down to Megan and let her dictate how the offense goes. You know, we saw it. I mean, what the Cash and Wildcats want to do is kind of get somebody in that short, short corner and then see what happens from there. And it worked. Like, Megan missed one of those shots, but here's, the, here's what's going to happen is she's going to settle down in this second half and once she gets the ball in her hands, she's, she's a smart enough player that she can find the open player, put it on the ground and make a move and, and lay one up. Uh, the Garber Wolverines, you know, continue getting the ball to number 22. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's what they're going to have to uh, uh, – the Cash and Wildcats are really going to have to slow her down. But the, I think they have enough really good players. If you focus too much on her, right. they have somebody that can really step in uh, with a couple of different players that I've seen uh, and have some success uh, getting, going up and, and getting scores. All right, so great entry pass, great work by Schaefer. You know, she's smiling it off. I, I love I love Megan's approach there. 
Goes up, gets her own offensive rebound, knocks it off her foot as she's going back in. So turnover Wildcats there on the possession there, start the third quarter. Oh, there it is. So uh, Reese Williams, and sometimes it's just putting your foot out there, sometimes we'll do it, and that'll be enough as uh, Wildcats draw the turnover by Mandy Bell. Yeah, and I think that time, I think Mandy was just about to pass it, uh, and Reese did a really good job of just kind of <laughs> giving that fake of I'm coming out to, to be aggressive on you, and she was able to uh, uh, get her to make that turnover. Well, inside <laughs> pass into Schaefer. You know, pay, great move there by Schaefer, in and out. Good job there by the Garber defense, too, not fouling her. Uh, still can't get it Just to go. Just a lid on the bucket for <laughs> Megan. I mean, and that, that time she made a great move, put it up. I thought it was a, easy enough off yep. the backboard, and it just would not go in. So inbounds uh, actually goes out of bounds off of Garber on the rebound. Around the horn it goes to Williams. 2-3 uh, look here for the Wolverines. Uh, Wolverines in maroon, maroon tops, maroon bottoms. Entry pass in the short corner. Pass down low to Williams. That one will go into the hands, and Schaefer almost gets a chance. So give credit to Layla Washington. Straight up just takes it right out of Reese Williams' hands, and then Schaefer from the backside knocks it out of bounds, almost gets the steal. So a little token press here with Westerhoff on Wilkerson. She's been hounding her all night. Westerhoff's got two fouls, something to look out for here. No uh, cheap fouls. Make sure to move your feet, don't reach. Up top, it'll be Washington out to Island around the horn. Inside uh, number 23, Kaylin Bond. Back and forth it goes, 6.52 on the clock here. Started the third quarter. Can appreciate you guys joining us. How's that burger, Maddox? It's good, all right. Left hand is up, no good. Schaefer with the rebound. And I, again, I, I absolutely love Washington's game. She is smooth. Soft touch, around the horn it goes. West, was Wildcats get the one and done. Skip pass, dangerous to Jenkins. Around the horn, Westerhoff, baseline three. <laughs> In and out, fighting for the rebound into the hands. Showing the strength is Kaylee Island, stripping it out of Schaefer's hands, and it'll be Garber basketball. Yeah, and that time, you know, uh, Westerhoff was open initially, and she didn't take that shot, and I thought, that's smart. Let the girls get in position and throw it around a few times. And then once she got open again, pulled the trigger, and Megan was in a great spot to get a rebound. Just went right over her hands in England. Uh, England is a you know, good enough player to use her body and, and grab that ball away and, and put it back in the hands of the Garber Wolverines. First foul on Megan Schaefer, and that, that's just a tough foul. You can't do that. I mean, Megan had, had worked Isle, or Washington deep into the lane, outside the lane, no reason to reach over her back. So that'll be her first, the first on the Wildcats, first on either team here in the third quarter. Megan Schaefer's going to get her shoelaces tied. Hopefully those are double knotted, triple knotted. We'll get a little sweat, sweat situation, perspiration. Great, great facilities and great court. Oh, no doubt. I love the... Uh... The open concession stand. My family was sitting down there in the uh, concession stand, just watching the ball game. The girls were running around. I think they moved over to the uh, <laughs> to the great uh, the, the padded seats over here now. Uh, but uh, Garber Wolverines, man, that time just uh, worked their offense to uh, perfection. Uh, was able to get a, a layup there. Yeah, nice work on the out of bounds. Great entry pass, and then back down. Schaefer left hand is good. Finally, Megan Schaefer gets uncorked. Love seeing that. And Chris, you said it right. Keep working, keep looking to get it to her, and things will happen. Yeah, that time she was uh, just grabbed the ball, put it on the ground, and went straight to the basket, and uh, was able to finish. And that's what you're going to have to see from her uh, going forward in this game. And once uh, they start collapsing on her, she'll find open players to make uh, make big plays. Jumpers no good by. They got a foul there. I think that was by Kaylin Bond. Yeah, and I think that's one of those uh, just frustration yeah. fouls, kind of like what we saw from the Cash and Wildcats with Reese earlier. Uh, when the other team gets the rebound, I know it's so tempting to just reach out there and try to knock that ball away, but save that foul, get down there and play defense, and not not don't give them an easy uh, a foul there. That's going to be over and back. So good credit to Coach Davis. She comes out a little half court trap there, a little high two pressure. And uh, getting the ball out of Jenkins' hands. Hobgood comes in to Reese Williams. Reese Williams look, thought she had Jenkins, so turnover Wildcats. It'll go to Garber. Nice job there by the girls in maroon. Getting that defensive turnover back. 22 all, 514 on the clock. Westerhoff on Wilkerson. It's been a uh, fantastic battle between those two here. Washington up top with Jenkins on her. She'll reset. Wildcats said uh, the, the where you want to watch is down low with Island and and uh, Megan Schaefer, that's been a battle there in the lane as they relocate. Abby Hobgood over the back, you can't do it. Yeah. If, you, if, you lose, if you lose possession or position, you can't do that. That's the easiest call for an official to make. And so that'll be the third foul there on Abby Hobgood. She'll have a seat as Addison McCracken 
And that all starts early on, right? You can't get beat down deep in the lane. And that's why I was going to say, as a post player, that's why it's so important to work on the offensive side of the ball to get in position. Once you get in position and the ball comes in, it's either I'm going to have the ball in a great position to go up or they're going to foul me. Yep. And that's what the Garber girls are, are really good at. And, and Megan does a great job, too, on the, on the catching side of the ball. But Garber, the Garber girls are doing a good job of getting in position on the offensive side of the ball uh, with a great – giving the, the, the outside – perimeter girls a good opportunity to get the ball into them that time england just puts it on the ground and says i'm going to go score and uh, was able to get it up and down yeah that was washington layla washington with her 13th point of the game again high scorer in the first half by all teams that one goes off of jenkins and i i hope uh cash and defense has recognized that that layla washington's left-handed I, I i would hope by now they've realized that over little carry there so nice work there and you know what? When the ball's not in Chloe Wilkerson's hands, this Garber offense kind of stalls out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, if you can get it out of her hands early before it comes across the, the uh, midcourt line and then try to jump in there and uh, and, and trap and use that half-court line as a, a third defender, uh, that's where we've seen them have some, some issues. So Jaylee Harp's checked in. Jenkins for three. Angles no good. Jaylee Harp fighting for the rebound. She knocks it out. Looks like she drew some body. So over the back, that'll be a foul on Jaylee. Her second, the third team foul on Cashin. 24-22, Garber Wolverines up. 404 here in the second quarter or third quarter of the Next Era Energy Garber Invitational Championship Night here for the girls. Again, appreciate you guys joining us here on what is Garber Wolverines TV. This is the Cashin Wildcat TV takeover. Baseline jumper, no good. Jaylee Harp doesn't get the over-the-back call there for her, but she'll fight for that defensive rebound, and she'll get it quickly out. Lauren Jenkins will work left side. Push-off is not called. Fortunately, inside to Jaylee Harp gets body. Left hand's no good. Fantastic find by Lauren Jenkins and great positioning by Jaylee Harp. Yeah, that time I think Jenkins was looking at, at McCracken. I mean, she was had her eyes down the court trying to find somebody open. Uh, all the while, Jaylee was getting in position, and as she was getting down there and let that defender go by, she found Jaylee down low in that position that we talked yep. about on the offensive side of the ball. When you're any, both, both of these teams have girls that – do a great job of getting in position on the offensive block or in the lane, and when the ball gets to them, they either get fouled or they make their shots. Harp converts both, so tie ball game, 24 all. That foul went against Layla Washington, her second. She's got the ball. The lefty will work right side across left. Addison McCracken on her. She'll dump it down to Island. Baseline jumper's no good. Schaefer with a catch and grab, two on one. Westerhoff decides to pass it up to Williams. She'll go ahead and drive, dump down. To Harp, she'll go up and we'll have a, a walk. Yeah. That's tough. Yeah, that was tough. Jaylee was just in that weird, awkward spot where she, as she was getting up yeah. to make the shot, that was just she a tough did pat. get that, off of the ground, and that, that's why he called the travel. Little press here, man press, as Reese Williams picks up number 10, Mandy Bell. She'll finally get it out to Washington. Washington will work left hand. McCracken on her. Island in that same spot on the baseline with a dump down. Wilkerson will go ahead and get it. The Garber Wolverines will reset. Wildcats staying in that man. Left hand Wilkerson gets loose, blocked Boy, by Schaefer there. quickly. Madison Westerhoff to Reese Williams off the glass. It's good. Madison Westerhoff missed Williams on that last fast break. She finds her this time. Williams has got seven. Wildcats take the lead, 26-24. Pressure there, Washington, and we'll have a timeout as Coach mm. Davis has had enough. So give credit to the Wildcat full court press. Man press has generated a lot of action and the Wildcats take the lead 26-24. Yeah, and honestly right there, if I was Coach Davis, I would have let uh, Washington just go <laughs> to the rack because there was one defender with Elgin, uh, England down there, Elin down there, and uh, if somebody comes over to Wilkers or Washington, she's a good enough yeah. ball handler to dump it off or yeah. just take it to the rack. So, well, Chris, uh, let me play I'll devil's advocate. I've just there's times where where when things are just out of sorts, all of a sudden that maybe look like a fast break. It ends up being a charge call, and she gets her third or something. There you so, go. gotta trust trust uh, Coach Jamie Davis. But I'm feeling you too. She had a full blast uh, in, uh, medal to the uh, pedal, the medal to the pedal scenario there. And again, Washington just so impressed with that left hand drive. She's really yeah. smooth. Yeah, no doubt, and and you saw it. It's not just a, a block. She's not just a block player. She's a perimeter yep. player that can handle the ball right there. You saw it. Her leading the fast break, 
and she can catch and shoot out there from the perimeter too. So, yeah, definitely a a, a player that to watch in class are they class b right class a class a okay mm -hmm. so yeah definitely player player to watch in class a uh to go uh, you know be one of those all staters yeah. uh, coming up fantastic wildcats uh, on defense here is garber out the timeout hit it off to washington wilkerson almost walked there madison westerhoff with the defensive assignment on her up top those two have been working against each other all night 231 on the clock third quarter wildcats staying in that man defense Look for that high screen. Williams slow on the roll on the help. Westerhoff looks like she's in a little bit of pain as she may have rolled her ankle. Shot is no good. Washington with the offensive rebound. Blocked by Schaefer. Underneath there's a scrum. Madison or Addison McCracken quickly with the rebound. Reese Williams will keep it to the glass and it's good. Back to back steals and dumps. Reese Williams has got four here in the second half. She's got nine total leading all cash and Wildcats. Defense leading the offense. Yeah, no doubt. Getting the ball and pushing it down the floor. I love fast break basketball. And Reese Williams is doing a great job of just getting out, uh, kind of snowboard, snowboarding, and they're finding her for the open layups. Wilkerson, Reese Williams with another theft. She's going to go right hand. She's got two on one. She's got McCracken on the opposite block. Drop down, pass, bucket is good. Wildcats on a 6 0 run, extending that lead out 30 to 24. McCracken's first point to the second half, 127. Wilkerson left hand, she'll keep going down that baseline. Nice close out there by Westerhoff. Jenkins matching up against Washington. She gets it deep in the lane, no good. What? Schaefer with the rebound, Williams, cherry picking right side. Will go up off the glass, it's good. Time out, Garber. Woo, partner. Hey, like you said, defense turning to offense, and uh, Reese Williams just running the floor. They are finding her, giving her the ball, and letting her finish on the other end of the floor. You know, they're, we talked about these officials and letting them play. They're really letting them play down there. Megan's doing a good job of staying straight, straight up, up yep. straight up, goes for the ball, doesn't make contact with the player, and that's what a good defense looks like right there, turning into offense. Yeah. Absolutely. So back to back to back steals and layups for the Wildcats. It could have been four in a row. I, I, I swear, Westerhoff, I, I'm not sure. I think Reese Williams may have kind of curled out of her vision, but I think Westerhoff could have hit Reese Williams on would have been four straight fast break layup opportunities. Nonetheless, Wildcats, it was knotted up at 24. They end up taking the lead up eight, 32-24. Again, appreciate you guys joining us here on Scordle TV, on Garber Wolverines.tv, and Cash and Wildcats.tv. And even a Bobby Chris Gibson bringing you tonight's championship action. A little bit of a cash and flair, but we love the, what we've seen out of this Garber squad tonight, haven't Man, we? Yeah, they're impressive, and they're going to uh, have some success this year, that's for sure. And, and they're not out of this yet. Oh, no, absolutely not. Uh, they've got not. the players to uh, really be able to uh, make a comeback here and uh, – do not put, do, do not think they're they're out of this ball game because with the athleticism and the the skill sets that they have, they have all the pieces that could make a comeback here tonight in this championship game. Quickly down, they break the press uh, as uh, Island will work left hand into the lane. Schaefer on her skip pass out to number twenty. That's Nea Fincher, Nevea Fincher up top to Wilkerson, point guard extraordinaire for the Wolverines. Looks like uh, it looks like Washington's going to get her first break of the game. Abby Hobgood's checked in. Reese Williams with the knockout almost had a chance. So for the Wildcats on the floor, we've got Williams, Hobgood, uh, Jenkins, Megan Schaefer, and Addison McCracken. We've got Island Wilkerson who gets that pass in from uh, Mandy Bell, which is stolen by Reese Williams. So another steal for the Wildcats. Jenkins will work with the ball now up top with Wilkerson on here. Going back to that zone. Entry pass into Schaefer. She catches it deep, has a chance. Loose ball. Garber hounding her. That one will fall into Wilkerson's hand. So turnover with 23 seconds. Wildcats up eight. Wilkerson left hand will dump down inside. To Fincher up top now to number 23, Kaylin Bond. Washington, I'm sorry, Island will work. Things have slowed down a little bit with uh, Washington on the bench here for Garber. Loose ball, Williams on the floor. Wilkerson trying to find somebody. Eventually finds Fincher. And that'll be the end of the third quarter as the Wildcat defense is on DEFCON 7. <laughs> and you know that 
the first time that we had to set up really on offense down here in a while. Yeah. You know, we had we had a, what an eight nine or an eight ten run <laughs> point run there, and never had to set up on on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, when we set up down there, I was kind of like, well, we're, we're actually having to set up in an offense, and uh, but the Garber girls were able to stop Megan from scoring. Had a chance to come down here and get it in, but like you said. The offense and the, the the Garber Wolverines just aren't as fluid without Washington in the ball game, and you saw it there right at the end, at the end of the uh, third quarter. And I have a feeling uh, she'll be back in to, to <laughs> yeah. finish out this and, fourth quarter. And she's not in foul trouble. I think that's just Coach Davis giving her trying breath. to give yes. her a breath. She's worked her tail off again uh, with uh, looks like close to 13, yes, 13 points uh, for Garber. So Wildcats uh, and and the Wolverines were 12-10 in the first quarter. It was Wolverines up two, second quarter, 20 to 20, tied at halftime. It was the Wildcats on a 12 to four run in the third quarter, predicated on defense and layups, go up 8-32-24, and it'll be Garber basketball. Eight minutes to a championship here in Garber, Oklahoma. It's Wilkerson up top for the ninth ranked Garber Wolverines in Class A. Brooke Schaefer's checked in, loose ball as Island and we'll have a foul. Island, I'm not sure if she lost that, but Brooke Schaefer doing great work as Megan Schaefer taking a break, and uh, that'll be a foul against the Garber Wolverines, the third one against uh, Kaylee Island. And that, that's another you know instance of those really quick, active hands. McCracken, uh, Island went by her, uh, and McCracken was able to get, I think, a hand in there on the ball, and it just messed her dribble up enough for McCracken to grab the ball. But like you said, great job by Schaefer there to uh, – uh, really be able to play some good defense and man good good find there to Abby Hobgood just wasn't able to finish was able to draw the foul there uh, to get to the line so nice work there by uh, Lauren Jenkins the senior guard she didn't allow the trap to even get to her she split it before it had a chance nice cut left side found Abby Hobgood on the block Abby quite a bit of contact that's the fourth foul on Kaylin Bond misses the first free throw and with that, Megan Schaefer will check in for Addison McCracken, where she'll get an a nice, well-deserved round of applause from the home squad or from the visiting Cash and Wildcat fans. Hobgood on the day, looking for her first points here. Let's see if we can give her a little bit of extra. Well, we got a little jinx there. Ooh, loose ball <laughs> as uh, Washington is able to get that one. So 24-32, no change here. 7:30 on the clock. Washington will go and keep it. Ooh. Reese Williams almost with another steal there, hounding Chloe Wilkerson. Washington with a little fake up and under left hand is good and count it. Wow. Whoa. Well, that time that was a quick whistle there. I didn't really see the foul, but uh, one of the Schaefer girls must have got a hand in there as she was going strong. But good fake. Had the Cash and Wildcats kind of leaning one way, puts that ball in her left hand, and that's her hand right there. That's, that's her strong hand. Puts it, goes to the rack, is able to go up and get the bucket and a foul. Brooke Schaefer with the foul, count to the three point play, it's good. So nice conversion there by the Wolverines coming back here to start the fourth quarter. Westerhoff, deep three. That one short, rebound, Hopgood off the glass, no good, Schaefer will fight for it. She'll come up off the little bit of a bump. Garber fans wanting a little bit of a clear out. I think it was a good no call. 27-32, Garber with the basketball. Wilkerson up top. It'll be Madison Westerhoff on her as Reese Williams has his seat. Same play. Jenkins has got to be better than that. Now let her fake that every day, all day long. Set on that left side and don't let her put the ball on the floor to go to that left side of the rim. If she passes that off, I want the ball out of her hands. Let it. Let her pass that. Yep. Um, if you're a Garber fan, you're saying keep the ball in your hands, <laughs> fake that and go to the rack just like you're doing because. That's what's working right now for uh, the Garber Wolverines. And Washington, I think, probably a good enough player to probably go to the right just like that. But right now what's working is going to the left. And if you're a Cash and Wildcat fan, you're saying, hey, stand on that left side, make her beat you going to the right because we know that she can do it going to the left. Loose ball underneath, still fighting for it between Schaefer and it looks like Washington will have a jump ball there. Actually, that was Island. Now, possession error will stay here for Cashin. So, with that, it is now a 5-0 run here by the Garber Wolverines to start the fourth quarter. 29-32, Wildcats still held scoreless here. Schaefer and Hobgood will have a seat. Checking back in will be Addison McCracken and Reese Wims skip pass underneath Jenkins, give and go, it's good. Great team basketball 
Jenkins with her first two-point field goal of the game. Wildcats get their first buckets of the fourth quarter. Back up five, 34-29, 6-28 on the clock. Washington with the ball. The fluid, fantastic lefty will work left side to Wilkerson. Wildcats staying in that man. Pass inside, deflected. Eventually corralled by Westroff. Great job by Megan Schaefer. Quickly down to Abby Reese Williams. Inside to Schaefer. Skip pass to Jenkins. Jenkins will dive and we'll get a call oh, for yeah. a foul. Oh, actually, I apologize. A walk. Walk. Yep. So yeah, I think she did. She faked it. Took a step before I think that ball hit the ground. Lauren didn't agree with that, no. but uh, I think it, I think it was. I think that left, left foot came up just right before. Uh, but man. Want to see that right there? You, you see the Cash and Wildcats diving to the basket, and that's why how you saw the, uh, the Kraken get the ball to Jenkins on the bucket that they made. I wanted to continue to see them attack the basket. So that's just a little bad luck, Westerhoff. A toothpick versus a tree. There ain't gonna. That, that's not gonna happen. That's not gonna work. And so that's gonna be a third foul on Madison Westerhoff. That is the third team foul for the Wildcats. Remember, with rules now, quarters. The bonus changes, it's five by each quarter and it'll go straight to double bonus. Wildcats extending out a little trap here. High, uh, two, <laughs> a two girl trap up top. Washington with the three, it's long. Corralled in by number 22, our 23, Kaylin Bond. Another shot up, no good. Block out is there, but give credit to Island scooping in as Megan Schaefer still on the ground. Little skippy do. Wilkerson with the three and it's good. Great job there, great shot by Chloe Wilkerson. She's got five. And the, there was a foul on the play, so the ball's actually gonna stay uh, on the Garber end of the basket, uh, basketball court. So uh, what was a fantastic end of the third quarter has completely flipped as the Garber Wolverines have been able to go, in essence, what is that? Uh, if I can do my math right, that's a, uh, <laughs> A 12-2 run here to start the fourth quarter. Wildcats still find themselves up 34-32. It'll be Garber basketball. That was an off-ball call on the shot after the shot by Megan Schaefer. That'll be her second. Megan's been quiet. She's been doing her work on the defensive end. She's only got two points, so give credit to the Garber defense hounding her. And you know what? If you're Garber, that's exactly what you do. You're going to double down. You're going to help the helper on Megan Schaefer. You're going to dare other folks to try to beat you. Yeah, and if you're Megan, you got to keep a cool head because whenever they are double teaming her, you know, that, that gets to her. That I mean, it's hard to, to really go against two players for a whole game and not let it just uh, eat on you a little bit. Megan just needs to keep her head, keep doing the things she's doing, find open players, continue to play good defense, good solid defense, and it'll work out for Absolutely. you, man. Absolutely. Again, big shout-out to all of our fantastic sponsors here on Scordo on Cash and Wildcat TV, Garber Wolverines. Big shout-out to Nikki Joe. Open her new store, Cash and Floral Design, right next to uh, Flower and Fennel. We've got a little, we got a fancy strip mall down there in Cash and in Oklahoma. Looks good down there. Absolutely does. Garber basketball on the baseline, 6 five twenty six here, fourth quarter. It's a good one. We told you it was. It continues to be as Washington will get that skip pass. Jenkins on her. She'll go left hand. Good help there by Westerhoff, almost screening Jenkins on her own. Wilkerson will reset here as Westerhoff is on her. They'll get it back into Island. Schaefer with the steal. Nice job there as they were baiting that one. Great job by Schaefer as looked like it was Bell looking for Kaitlin Bond in the block. Jenkins will work left side. Westerhoff will eye the three, does not shoot it. Wildcats will reset. Schaefer working against Washington. Get it to her. See if they can find her. Jenkins looks for it. It's not there. Skip pass all the way. Westerhoff. Wildcats are looking a little tired here, but we'll reset, get their breath. The extended zone here as Wilkerson try to get that trap up top with Jenkins getting it out of her hands. Back down to Jenkins. Angle threes up. Just short. Rebound into the hands of Kaylin Bond, the freshman post, and it'll be Garber basketball, 424. Wilkerson versus Westerhoff. Drop down into Wilkerson. It's loose. Schaefer finally gets it. We'll hand it off. So intended receiver there on that give and go from Washington was Wilkerson was not able to get it. And with 4.05 on the clock, it'll be cash and basketball across the timeline at the logo to Madison Westerhoff back to Jenkins. 
Two, three, extended look, high post catch. Schaefer will drive and she's gonna get fouled. Who's this one gonna go against? Looks like an island, I think. It will be, oh, it's gonna go against number 10, Mandy Bell from the backside. That's just her second. Island getting a, a break there. It looked like she was the one that tripped Schaefer, but uh, it was called on the reach out of bounds. Baseline will be Wildcats. Skip past the McCracken, she'll work up top. Reese Williams will eye the three, decides to give it up. Wildcats will reset. Wilkerson up top. She's working her tail off on that defensive end. Somebody go get her a Gatorade and a Snicker bar. She's worked hard. 339, drop down inside out. Three balls up. Bang, Reese Williams! Big time three for the Wildcats, a great answer. Extend that lead to five. Full court press here, actually just a token man press as the uh, inbound goes into Washington. Jenkins matched up with her, and this is gonna be it right here. Watch that left hand. Washington will work back across the left side. Four low here for Garber. She'll go ahead and take it to the basket. Jenkins, good defense. Schaefer with the extension will go ahead with that length and get the rebound. Take your time, sis, she does. So great job by Jenkins on the defense on Washington, left side. She'll cut to the cup, off the glass. Delicious, L train Lauren Jenkins with a bucket, coast to coast. Wildcats extend that lead to 7, 39-32, 251. Washington getting caught up here. She'll go ahead and reset, Jenkins on her. This is the battle right here. 2.43 on the clock. Island working hard on Schaefer. Deep in the block. Left hand scoop. No good. Knocked out of her hands. That'll be a foul. And that one's going to go against Mandy Bell. And that'll be the fourth team foul. So with both teams with four fouls, next foul is double bonus free throws. Yeah, and this time, you know, earlier I was going to say that uh, coming out of that timeout earlier, I think Ms. Taylor, uh, Coach Taylor must have told them, slow it down, run your offense. But then Lauren Jenkins gets the ball and goes straight to the cup, finishes off strong. Let's see if they start really setting up in their offense, making a few passes before they work it in, and uh, try to burn some of that clock off. Amen, amen. Skip pass around. McCracken will shoot the three. That's in and out. Schaefer on the ground. I'm not sure what happened there. <laughs> Westerhoff hounding Washington. And that'll be uh, a and you can't do that, yeah. Reese. Can't foul from behind. Yeah, then that time Reese just Got a little bit greedy there, tried to knock the ball out. If you're going to do it, kind of poke it out. I think she came over the top, hit the hand of Washington, and that's going to put her on the, on the free throw line, shooting two free throws. Fifth team foul for the Wildcats, third for Reese Williams. Washington, the senior, misses the first. She's been the absolute engine for this Garber team. So impressed with her. This is the first. Wildcats up seven here. Make that six. 39-32, two possession game. Wildcats don't have to do anything. Extended 2-2-1 here as Jenkins waves down McCracken. She'll drive through, loose ball is able to get it. And we'll have a timeout, good work there uh, by uh, Coach Taylor getting her team reset and on the sideline. We'll take a timeout. Don't leave us, we'll be right back. We got a good one. Garber Co-op, serving the communities of Garber, Fairmont, and Covington, knows how important high school sports is to the community and is excited to help sponsor this contest. The Garber Co-op can help you with all of your grain, fertilizer, custom fertilized spread, feed, fuel, and propane needs. Visit the Garber Co-op today or call us at 580-863-2292. The Garber Co-op salutes all of the coaches, athletes, and cheerleaders who make the commitment to make high school sports great. All right, welcome back. Fourth quarter action championship Saturday live from Garber, Oklahoma. It's the Next Era Energy Resources Invitational, and we got a good one. I'm Neiman Nababi, Chris Gibson, Maddox Gibson, bringing you tonight's action here, the championship game on the girls' side with the Wildcats taking on the hometown Garber Wolverines in a back and forth affair where the Wildcats are up 39-33. We got a couple minutes. Chris, what's Coach Taylor telling the squad right now? Just stay in control. Stay in control of the ball. Get the ball in our hands on offense. Set up your offense. Find a good open shot. Don't be afraid to take the shot. You saw McCracken all go. She got open. She took it. But don't force anything right now. You don't have to. You're up by six with two minutes left to go. Run your offense. Find something open. And, and if it's there, make a shot. Don't foul. What if you're Garber? What's Coach if Davis? If you're Garber, they're saying get the ball. Be aggressive. Go to the rack we got to get back in this ball game. And, and on the defensive side of the ball, 
for Garber. Be aggressive. Go for steals. Go for, uh, you know, don't be afraid to foul a little bit because you've got to get the ball back in your hands, back into the hands of uh, 22, your best player. And when you get the ball, go to the rack and don't be afraid to score. Jenkins goes to the cup. Big time take there by Jenkins. Wildcats up 8, 146. Full court press here, manned up. Westerhoff on Wil on Wilkerson, she'll work left side, almost gets the turnover, it's tipped out. Correct call there by the official, she'll go to the basket. Schaefer in her face, tipped out, off Westerhoff's hands and out of bounds, it stays Garber basketball. And, and honestly, you know, only being down, well, now you're down what, not uh, eight. eight, but still, you know, get a quick three if you're Garber, get you back within four, you know, that's the thing is, this team is good enough. They've got the players to uh, get back in this ball game, even though there's only a minute and a half left. Precious seconds off the clock, 125, 123. Washington up top, Jenkins on her. This has been the matchup all night. Deep three for Washington, it's right good. There. Like I said, now you they're only down by four with a minute left. There's still plenty of time in this ball game for Garber to fight back into this game. So Cash and Wildcats just need to take care of the ball, uh, set up your offense, use the time, and when they foul you, you got to make your free throws. 41-36, one minute on the clock. Exactly, Westerhoff, a little three-girl weave up top between Williams, Westerhoff, and Jenkins. And we'll have the foul, and that will send Reese Williams to the line. The foul goes against Kalen Bond. Five-point lead partner. Five point lead. I can't do math. No, you can. <laughs> I know you can do math. I, you better because I got all my insurance through you, buddy. <laughs> That's right. And you just had to add a new I driver. I had a new right? driver, Brian Nabobby. <laughs> Goodness gracious, you, man. Uh, do do not have four boys. I can't wait for Kate to come up. Yes. All right. So uh, with that, uh, that is the fifth foul on uh, Kaylin Bond, the freshman post. She finishes with two points. Reese Williams with the first of two shots makes the first. Reese has just been fantastic. 15 points, leading score for the Wildcats here. 52 seconds on the clock. Williams shooting the second of two free throws, and we'll have a lane violation. And they'll say that was on, oh, Megan, I think. Yeah. on a Wildcat. So missed shot anyway. So it'll be out of bounds on the baseline. Wildcats man press. They're going to make Garber work 90 feet here to get those eight or six points. Inbound into Wilcox. Madison Westerhoff matches up with her. Reese Williams on Bell with the steal. Loose ball back to Westerhoff. Westerhoff to the cut. She's going to go ahead and shoot it. Misses it. Schaefer with the rebound. Put back. It's good. Count it. Megan Schaefer. She has worked her tail off on the defensive end and gets the and one opportunity. And that may have just sealed the fate for the Cash and Wildcats here on Championship Saturday night. Yeah, and usually, you know, you see Megan a lot of times with a lot of points for the Cash and Wildcats tonight. She hasn't had that many points, but, man, she has been a presence on the defensive side of the ball, really working and keeping those, uh, you know, really good athletic, tall, long uh, post players from Garber at bay. Misses that free throw, and one opportunity's not there. Wilcox will work across the middle. Westerhoff on her. Washington, deep three, why not? Misses that one. That one will go out of bounds at a touch of Wildcat. They say it did get tipped. It'll stay Garber basketball. So with 29 seconds, Wildcats up eight, tying their biggest lead of the night. It'll be Garber basketball on the baseline. Island in the middle. Washington on the elbow. She'll work back. McCracken on her. Inside the island, Schaefer straight up. Jump shot on the baseline. No good by Bell. Reese Williams with the rebound into Jenkins. Wolverines are going to have to foul. Do they wave the white flag? Let's see if uh, they'll come across. Jenkins working across three girls. Skip pass to Westerhoff. 13 seconds on the clock, and we'll get a foul with 10.9, and that'll be it. So that'll be the fourth foul on Mandy Bell. Chris, you surprised? No, these girls, man, just all year long. I know I haven't been on the broadcast, but I've gotten to watch them play quite a bit. And uh, every single game, I feel like they have gotten better. Um, you know, you saw, uh, and, and you see different people stepping up in different games. Like, you know, one game early on, Westerhoff had, what, six or seven threes. It was crazy. Uh, you see Megan making a lots of, uh, of points in a few games. You've seen Lauren come uh, uh, un, unhinged on a few games, just go off making some points. Tonight, you have, you know, Reese Williams just going off, and, and a lot of that is because of the defense and how good – uh, we've been on the defensive side of the ball has turned into five fast break opportunity 
for Reese Williams, but she still has a finish to make that happen, and that's what we've seen tonight. So great job by the Cash and Wildcats to really be able to spread the love around and, and each girl be able to step up. And if they continue to get better and each person kind of start adding their own flair to this team, they're going to be something to yeah, watch totally agree. Uh, l later on in the year and, and deep into the playoffs. Jenkins with the foul. And I absolutely love the Jenkins fire. It certainly has been passed down to Lauren Jenkins. So uh, Layla Washington makes the first, purposely tries to miss the second one. Violation there, Reese Williams, and that'll be it. Cash and Wildcats move to 5-0 and with a championship victory here at the Next Era Energy Resources Invitational in Garber. Credit to Cash and defense leading the, uh, leaving the offense, and the Wildcats will move on and collect that trophy. Big shout out to the number ninth ranked Class A Garber Wolverines, Coach Jamie Davis, runners up. And what can you say about Layla Washington? She is an absolute force and something to be reckoned with for the rest of this year. Yeah, no doubt. And the Garber girls, man, uh, they, they came out on fire, got up big, uh, about five or six points in that first quarter. The Cash and Wildcats just hung around, hung around. The second it was able to take the lead at the end of the first half or first quarter. Same thing in the second quarter. And then that coming out in that third quarter was able to really pull away. But in the fourth quarter, you saw that big, massive surge by the Garber Wolverines. And that's the thing is like they're, they're capable of those big runs. The Cash and Wildcats kept their head, were able to then turn it around and get that big eight point lead there at the end and was just able to hang on, make their free throws and uh, just pull away in this championship game for, uh, and, and put them in a position to go five and zero on the season. Coach Taylor accepting the trophy here, Garber champions, Wildcats uh, in terms of history. If I take a look, this is their first championship in the last five years. So nice work, Garber was the champions last year. And Cash and the Lady Wildcats winners again, final 44-37. We appreciate you guys joining us here. We'll go ahead and stop the stream. We'll get it going for the next game as the Cash and Wildcats will be taking on the Garber boys for a championship on the boys' side. So for Chris uh, Gibson, I'm Neiman Abadi for Maddox Gibson. We appreciate you guys joining us here. We'll be right back here in a sec. Go Cats and God bless. <laughs> 